Hi guys, this is Allison from Alley Cat Creations. How are you? Please like, share, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And if you get anything from my work, a connect the dot, epiphany, a mind blown moment, a new book to read, a new author to explore, please consider supporting my work. All the links are at the bottom of the description of this video. And if you are interested in EMF, healing pyramids. I customize them. I do a lot of other things. I make candles. I have four cents that I just made new ones, that one included. I am waiting for them to be done so I could take pictures and throw them on the website. I also have ornaments. I also do a lot of different types of creations so I don't relegate myself just to making these. Please check my website out, alleycatcreations211.com, if you're interested in seeing and what all the work, like my paintings, the things that I do to be creative and also for work, because we all need to do that. And yeah. My favorite topics, I found some relevant, mind-blowing, not necessarily, but very interesting, like what they're trying to tell us, predict a program perhaps. Quantum AI and metaphysical ponderings is what we're tackling today because these goodies are just accumulating on my Facebook page. Many of you who are belonging to that, see them. Are you reading them? Very interesting stuff here. So <laughs> it's going to be fun. I promise. Sorry, I had a pause. I had to readjust everything on my screen. This first article is by Live Science, www.livescience.com. This is a good article here if I can get it on my frame. <laughs> Could Earth be inside a black hole? <laughs> um, I speculated this a, a whole bunch, um, just this article and this title. And that's because of, um, it's being taken out of 2012 being put in a fail safe did we really go into a fail safe did we wormhole through cern to through a black hole are we in pirates of the caribbean that our paradigm just flipped there's a lot of questions that are unanswered because we all perceive the universe differently therefore we are manifesting all kinds of crazy shit right now anyway this is by donovan coffee published june 18th 2023. And for that matter, could our universe be inside a black hole? <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing because, yeah. To the Earthlings gazing into space, our solar system appears to be surrounded by billions of stars in the Milky Way or holographic pictures of stars. But if we look even further out, would it be possible to find evidence that we were in something even more fantastic, like a black hole? Black holes are places in the universe where gravity is so strong, it distorts the time and space around it. Once inside, nothing, not even light, can get out. Maybe that could be uh, just plausible thinking here. That could be a reason why we have time distortion right now and we live in an illusion. Um, Ra and others have always said we live in an illusion. So there's something to that when multiple higher end density beings are saying such. Black holes are places in the universe where gravity is so strong, it distorts the time and space around it. Let's keynote that, put it in the, the back pocket. In one scenario, a black hole could be swallowed, have, could, could have, sorry, could have swallowed Earth long ago. But this 
is where the gravitational pull would be catastrophic, says Gaurav Khanna, a black hole physicist at the University of Rhode Island. As Earth approached the black hole, time would slow, and depending on the size of the black hole, matter could be stretched out into a spaghetti-like shape. Even if the planet survived the sp spaghettiification, Earth would be bound for the dense and tiny singularity where it would be incinerated by the pressure and temperature of the unfathomable gravitational force, Khan told live, live science. Possibly. A black hole looks very much like a big bang in reverse. The math looks similar. Kana said, while a black hole collapses in on a tiny, highly dense point, the Big Bang exploded out of such a point. One theory posits that the Big Bang was first the singularity of a black hole in a larger parent universe. The dense center compressed and compressed until somehow it blows up and a tiny baby universe is formed within the black hole. Kana said. The theory known as Schwarzschild cosmology suggests that our universe now expands within a black hole that is part of a parent universe. <clears throat> In theory, this scenario would mean that the universes can exist within universes like Russian nesting dolls and the traveling back through a black hole, a likely impossible feat since light can't even make the reverse journey would unlock unknown realms, Kana said. However, the theory is unlikely to be proven. Nothing can travel back across black hole's event horizon. See, here's the thing though. I, how does one know unless you put instrumentation that might one day view all ends of a black hole that's only a theory and black holes are only a theory because have we been there we're only observing them through computers through telescopic emanations of what we think is what we are seeing but do we really know what actually is a black hole you can have all these simulations and you can see all these things coming out of something, but are you physically in the capacity to see it in person with your two naked eyes? Hmm. But if Earth is within a black hole, experts have some estimation of the space chasm size. If we are in a black hole, it must be extremely big, says Scott Field an associate professor of mathematics at the University of Massachusetts, Dartmouth. Earth is not just tucked into a planet-sized black hole or even one the size of a solar system. If that were the case, scientists would have noticed field told live science. There would be observable signatures of black hole spin, or we'd see the subtle distortions caused by extreme gravity like slowing time and stretching matter as people move within the black hole. If Earth existed in Earth-sized black hole, for instance, people would notice effects of this tidal force, like spaghettification and slow time as they traveled from one spot on the globe, hmm, there's a problem right there, to another, said Field, who works on gravitational modeling and simulation, including black hole collisions. So any black hole Earth cold home must be enormous, universe size, and so vast that we, can, we can't travel far enough or fast enough to direct the gravitational distortions, Field said. From inside a black hole universe, Earthlings would have no way of knowing there was another parent universe in existence. Kana said, we'd be oblivious to it. So finding our universal predecessor would be tough, to say the least. Still, it would be lovely if this theory were to be true, he said.
though I would say that maybe we sprung from a black hole of the possible Big Bang that might have maybe took place, or that source took that big deep breath and said into existence vibrational sound and frequency, let there be light and boom, from that black hole sort of came us whizzing through whatever we are in now. <clears throat> Possible and plausible. Could be. Though what Ashiana Dean states and notes in her work is that there's the Wiesedek and other factions of agended infiltration, infiltrators who came from other black black hole systems. So if black holes are what they say they are, well, how can other beings exist within those black holes? They want us being sucked into a black hole so they feed off our quintessence and eventually we would be placed back into space dust, return to source. Well, do we see, do we see the conundrum here? There's a big one. That's a big one. So if there's other higher density beings that got ejected out of a black hole, what side of the black hole? And how did they get here? Is a bigger question. And it's something that we should be pondering a little bit more because if Ashiana Dean might be, I'm not saying she is or isn't right about black holes and about these other entity beings, trying to force us into a black hole so we could suck our quintessence and literally feed on us. Like it is kind of sort of doing now anyway, but maybe to a higher extent, who knows? You know, these things need to be investigated a little bit more to where these systems are. And if black holes are just nothing more than wormholes, or there's some black holes that act as portals and others that do not. Only time can tell. But yeah, I find this very, the first opening article, very, very enthusiastically interesting and something um, I've always pondered myself. But again, we, unless we are there to know, to see it for our own selves in the physical body, we can only speculate at this point. This next article from physics.org, one of our frequent insights here. This caught my attention because of this one name in this acronym here. New Alice. Hi, Alice. Measurements shed light on the dynamics of charm and beauty particles in quark gluon plasma. This was written December 15th, 2023. Alice analyzed non-head uh, lead lead collisions and compared the elliptic flow of D mesions produced. Okay, so I we're gonna go read on here. And I, I if you guys get lost, it's okay, but we, we got something kind of coming out of our, yeah, we'll read it. When two lead ions collide at the Large Hadron Collider, that's why I like this article, they produce an extremely hot and dense state of matter in which quarks and gluons are not confined inside composite particles called hadrons. The fireball of particles known as quark gluon plasma and believed to have filled the universe in the first few millionths of a second after the Big Bang, expands and cools down rapidly. The quarks and the gluons then transform back into hadrons, which fly out of the collision zone towards particle detectors. In collisions where the two lead ions do not collide head on, the overlap region between the ions has an elliptic shape that leaves an imprint on the flow of hadrons. Measurements of such elliptic flow provide a powerful way to study quark gluon plasma. In a recent paper posted to the ARXIV preprint server, 
<laughs> the Alice, this is in big capital letters, people, collaboration, reported a new measurement of the elliptic flow of hadrons containing heavy quarks, which are particularly powerful probes of the plasma. Unlike the gluons and light quarks that make up the bulk of the quark gluon plasma created in heavy ion collisions, heavy charm and beauty quarks are produced in the initial stages of the collisions before the plasma forms. They therefore interact with the plasma throughout its entire evolution for its expansion and cooling to its transformation into hadrons. Multiple interactions with plasma constituents being heavy quarks into thermal equilibrium with the medium within a time that is evasively proportional to the quark's mass. Charm quarks are lighter than beauty quarks. So a shorter thermalization time and a larger degree of thermalization is expected for charm quarks than beauty quarks. Okay, who the fuck named charm and beauty? Why would you name like scientific expressions of things you can't see beauty and charm? I don't understand it. Um, again, if that's the AI, Alice, naming these things or giving them AI. Mm, mm. Yeah, this is. <laughs> In its recent analysis of non-head on lead, lead collisions, the occupied occurrence during run two of the LHC, Large Hadron Collider, the ALICE collaboration measured the elliptic flow of B mesions by measuring the flow of non-prompt D mesions that are producing the decays of B mesions. Key to the analysis was the adoption of a machine learning technique to separate the products of decay of non-prompt D mesions from those of the prompt ones as well as to suppress the many background particle processes that mimic D mesion production and decay. Moving forward here, the new measurement shows that the elliptic flow of a non-prompt D mesion is weaker than that of their prompt counterparts. In agreement with the expectation, the result sheds new light on the thermalization of beauty quarks beauty. in the quark gluon plasma and paves the way for new ALICE measurements on the data from run three of the LHC, with 40 times more collisions than the total record by ALICE. That's something to also put back here in your brain. It is in previous periods of heavy ion data taking the new sample of lead lead collisions taken in 2023 will allow the flow of charm and beauty to be studied in great detail, shedding further light on their dynamics in the quark gluon plasma. Okay, so again, before I move forward, here again is experiments being done by CERN, being done by AI Alice, who is sentient, who we don't know what side it plays on. Some days it could be for the good. Sometimes it could be for the bad. Here and again, did humanity say it's okay for these experiments to even take place? Like, I think if they do something where they're, they're experimenting on, let's just say, what happened in 2012, how do they know the end result isn't a warping time space? We don't know. And why are we allowing people who are theorizing things to just have blind faith that their experiments are going to work out where it's not going to harm time space continuum or linear time or our reality in this holographic simulated matrix? We can only imagine the damage they already have done, the damage that we have no idea that is being projected and radiated into the ether by their stupidity and not just 
okay, yeah, these things need to be worked out, but maybe bringing people in that humanity. Why isn't, why don't we hear about this more unless you're in the field of physics, you're in the field of mathematics, you're into the sciencey stuff. A normal everyday person should know, regardless if they care or not, that they're doing these kinds of experiments. It doesn't matter what they're trying to produce. It could be something so minute and stupid, but when you get Alice involved, Again, Alice, Resident Evil, what are they doing? That movie is telling you a lot, a lot. And that's their way of telling you what, what goes on. But do they, these little articles that do come out, they already have done the experiments and they're always continuously doing these things. Why are we like last to know about them? Why why are we just in the not know? Especially when we have AI who we really don't know what direction it's going in. Is it for humanity or is it against humanity? And that could change on a bat of an eye. These these are why I do this the the this uh, this series. I find it very troubling that humanity isn't knowing what's going on millions of miles and who knows how long and how far down really this simulated matrix was written for how far deep do they go and what other CERNs are out there that are testing stuff under us no idea the amount of radiation and the amount of damage that could be doing to all of us. Like, I don't think they care. And if you say lead, lead, well, why did they get rid of lead paint? What what are they doing with these corks? Why are corks beautiful and shiny? Okay, because that looks like it on a picture. So you're you're naming it cute stuff, so we accept it better. I don't know about this. Again, it's just something to take in. I like to ponder a lot on these articles. You know, I might not understand the components. I can conceptualize some of these things, but like, why aren't we told? Especially when our taxpayer money is really funding a lot of these things. And if they say they don't, and then some billionaire is funding all this, I call BS on it. This is not just America versus Switzerland versus, you know, the big major powers of physics. This is like everybody in the world needs to know about this nonsense. This next article is interesting. Oh, poopy. Uh, this is from www.princeton.edu. I know this is something different, guys. Physicists entangle individual molecules for the first time, bringing about a new platform for quantum science. Um, this is by Tom Garlinghouse from the Department of Physics on December 8th, 2023. In a noteworthy first, a team of Princeton scientists have been able to link together individual molecules into special states that are quantum mechanically entangled. <laughs> In this bizarre state, the molecules remain correlated with each other and can interact simultaneously, even if they are miles apart or indeed, even if they occupy opposite ends of the universe. This research was published in current issue of the journal of science okay so scientists as you say that and thank you once again for proving a lot of the spirituality that goes on with us you are in matter you are in a physical high vehicle 
right? And if God spoke vibration and sound into the ether, into the universe to create all this and then said light and breathe the breath and everything started to be created, and that includes us, we are entangled to source, the, the motherboard of the computer, if you will, the all, whatever created us. We are tangled, entangled instantaneously. Like I said, your thoughts are not your own. They're God's thoughts. They're higher density beings running through you, entangled to you, through you. Here you are. You're entangled to the universe. You're entangled to each and every one of the things that are here. It's just on minus like infinite amounts of things you're entangled to. says it right there they're just proving it now congratulations physicists like i said my higher self has the joystick and i'm just the avatar it's playing and for anybody who doubts me i'm not alone in my thinking of this stuff please go watch decode your reality with logan is the YouTube channel. He's amazing. He just did one on Shiva. I watched it today. I'm like, this guy's talking my language. He's talking just like me. I've watched him a bunch of times before, but on different topics and different things. But like we are, there's a bunch of us starting to say neutrality is where it is. Being light as a feather, not allowing the, your your whole life is scripted and just go with the flow. Be the best version of your character you can be that you're playing on stage. He says it. Go watch his channel. If you're not, if I'm not convincing you, there are other people who are going to convince you. We got to be the best possible version of version of ourselves. Are you making that choice effort? Back to the article, anywho. This is a breakthrough in the world of molecules because of the fundamental importance of quantum entanglement, says Lawrence Ow, my nose, an assistant professor of physics at Princeton University, the senior author of the paper and the graduate of Princeton's class of 2010. Wow, 2010. But it also breakthrough for practical applications because entangled molecules can be the building blocks for many future applications. This included, for example, quantum computers that can solve certain problems much faster than conventional computers. Quantum simulators that can model complex materials whose behaviors are difficult to model and quantum sensors that can measure faster than their traditional counterparts. Hmm. These include, for example, quantum computers that can solve certain problems much faster than conventional computers. Quantum simulators that can model complex materials whose behaviors are difficult to model and quantum sensors that can measure faster than the traditional counterparts. One of the motivations in doing quantum science is that in the practical world, it turns out that if you harness the laws of quantum mechanics, you could do a lot better in many areas, said Connor Holland, a graduate student in the physics department and a co-author on the work. The ability of quantum devices to outperform classical ones is known as quantum advantage. And at the core of quantum advantage are the principles of superposition and quantum entanglement while on classical computer bit can assume the value of either zero or one. High matrix, quantum bits called qubits can simultaneously be superpositioned of zero and one. The later concept entanglement is a major cornerstone of quantum mechanics. It occurs when two particles become inextricably linked with each other so that this link persists even in one particle is light years away from the other particle. It is the phantom, it's the phenomenon, sorry, that Albert Einstein, who at first questioned its validity, described as spooky action at a distance, 
Since then, physicists have demonstrated that entanglement is, in fact, an accurate description of the physical world and how reality is structured. Quantum entanglement is a function, hmm, fundamental com concept, said Shiuk, but it is also the key ingredient that bestows quantum advantage. But building quantum advantage and achieving controllable quantum entanglement remain a challenge, not least because engineers and scientists are still unclear about which physical platform is best for creating qubits. In the past decades, many different technologies such as trapped ions, photons, superconducting circuits, to name only a few, have been explored as candidates for quantum computers and devices. The optimal quantum system or qubit platform could very well depend on the specific application. Until this experiment, however, molecules had long defined controllable quantum entanglement, but Shiuk and his colleagues found a way through a careful manipulation in the laboratory to control individual molecules and coax them into these interlocking quantum states. They also believe that molecules have certain advantages over atoms, for example, that made them especially well-suited for a certain application in quantum information, processing and quantum simulation of complex materials. Compared to atoms, for example, molecules have more quantum degrees of freedom and can interact in new ways. What this means in practical terms is that there are new ways of storing and processing quantum information, said yeah. Yukai Liu, a graduate student in electrical and computer engineering and co-author of the paper. For example, a molecule can vibrate and rotate in multiple modes. So you can use two of these models and modes to encode a qubit. If the molecular species is polar, two molecules can interact even when spatially separated. Nonetheless, molecules have proven notoriously difficult to control in the laboratory because of their complexity. The very degree of freedom that make them attractive also makes them hard to control or corral in laboratory settings. Shiuk and his team addressed many of these challenges through a carefully thought out experiment involving a sophisticated experimental platform known as a tweezer array in which individual molecules were picked up by a complex system of tightly focused laser beams, so-called optical tweezers. Using molecules for quantum science is a new frontier and our demonstration on demand entanglement is a key step in demonstrating the molecules can be used as a viable platform for quantum science, says Shiok. In a separate article published in the same issue of science, an independent research group led by John Doyle and Kang Kun Ni at Harvard University and Wolfgang Kettery at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology achieved similar results. The fact that they got the same results verify the reliability of our tests, Shiuk said. They also show the molecular tweezer arrays are becoming an exciting new platform for quantum science. So as soon as I finish that, uh, downloads, you got to love those. So upstairs is, I, I must have a scientist that's on my team up there. <laughs> no joke. Um, so a lot of people are, are invested in these med beds technologies, right? Let's like I keep saying, I, I would love to be healed. Like my teeth are giving me an issue right now. My gums up in there. I There's stuff going on with me. I haven't really been feeling 100%. I'm exhausted. I know I'm getting bombarded with energy and everything. But besides having rheumatoid arthritis and thyroid issues, and, and uh, who doesn't have a health issue? Like, let's just face it. There are very few people around the planet that's walking around like fine right or without some like catastrophic thing going on with them 
what bugs and disturbs me about medbed technology is that a, a lot of this stuff is what a med bed would be. And how do you know the frequencies that are being emitted are for your well, your well advised amazement where it's going to heal you? Or is it for your detriment? Is it going to destroy you? It's like, we want to say that there are people who have been teleported. There's been teleportation that breaks down your molecules and readjusts and refixes them somewhere else. And it has been proven that people have been going through this technology. Okay, but at what detriment to them? There could be radiational cancers and things that are happening because our bodies are just not meant to be in that state unless we are upgrading inside our insides are upgrading the same thing with med tech but the med bed technology they are still figuring out entanglement they're still figuring out these like what qubits are and how to best use them these super supercomputers they claim that they are already made and that all these things all these fantastical things are happening but yeah, we're reading these articles and they're coming out just this year or maybe in the last five years. I wouldn't trust my body to be input to some MRI looking machine that re-encodes my DNA. How do you know, what are they using what process? Anything can be infiltrated, including the entanglement. If you, again, decode your reality, he, he talked about the cosine and sine wave. Again, we're living in an ontological mathematical simulation. We're living in a holograph. Regardless of you feeling this is real, the illusion is it's probably not. It's hard to wrap your head around this. But what happens if a cubic could be infiltrated with a different waveform? What happens if you could rewrite something that do goes against your DNA? And of course, your high, your your will, your heart, your intention is to heal and to be healed so that you can further on bettering humanity and work. But you got to be starting doing that right now anyway, regardless if there's med beds or not. But this is like the concern that I have with all these experiments and these articles that I keep reading is because a lot of this science isn't yet fully developed. And again, as a humanity, do we know if this is really going for the betterment of humanity? Are these things being used for the good of humanity or are they to our detriment and destruction? We are only focused, most people are only focused on the plan and the political aspect of all of this when we really should be looking at different areas of humanity and what the scientific community is really eyeing themselves on because at the end of the day they're creating the technology into the future is it to our betterment or detriment is a bigger question that we should be posing and not the political agendas that are being flung at us to distract us. It's a fucking distraction. I'm sorry it is. The the Q clock thing the other day. Oh my God, it's the end. Do I put my computer on? I'm, I look at my Facebook feed and I'm just like, I'm so sorry. I don't want you to feel offended. Okay, I don't. But are you going here? And, and, and feeling if this is just a carrot on a strick dangling at you. It keeps having a countdown clock that everybody's focusing on, gazed on. Uh, in reality, we both should have been prepared like five years ago, six years ago. Why are you throwing your energy away at, at dumb shit? Well, if it happens, Olson. Well, so uh, who? If it does, great. If it doesn't, great. 
Why are you living your everyday life staring at an app, staring at a website for something that keeps rolling back? Okay, the, this, this new message popped up. Okay, let me go research this. I'm happy that you're expanding your mind and research. But people are not researching. They're looking for other people to do it for them. <laughs> Let's be like these scientists. Okay, not all of them are of the bad paradigm. A lot of them are good. A lot of them are just trying to figure out reality. They don't do the source thing. They're just doing the mathematical physics thing. That's That's their role that they're playing. Great. But the scary part is we have Alice in one damn article and now we have entanglement in another and entanglement is what is directed to us. It's what is attached to this vehicle. It's tethered. I like to call tether, tethering. We are tethered to other entities and other beings and other consciousnessness. Up there, besides ourselves, selves, plural. Scary world. But I I would really hesitate a bit when these, if, if, big if, these technologies come out, you don't know what's entangled to it. Because you can't see it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. You can't see frequency and vibration when you're sitting in the machine and it's doing its thing. You're not seeing anything. You might feel something. You might have a vibratory feeling from the machine. But it, again, we don't know what the agenda is. Why would you just throw yourself in and you are the med bed? Your whole body is the med bed. If you start talking nice to yourself and start self-loving, you're going to start feeling better. No, are you going to be healed of everything? But if there's frequencies, not in a machine that you could just play and listen to that start regenerating your teeth, I, I'm all for it. But I want to see it happen for somebody else before I expose myself to something that could cause damage later on. There is my free will enacted. But whatever happens, happens anyway. I wrote it in my script. But I'm not just giving blind faith to things external to myself when I should have faith in source. God the all the motherboard of the computer this next article is like a piggyback off of the last couple of statements i made this is from livescience.com <laughs> get ready for this humans could use black holes as batteries physics paper claims here's how we can use them as batteries but other entities have been using them as batteries and trying to suck us into one to eat our quanta yeah by Jacqueline Kwan this is published only five days ago Black holes are some of the most powerful objects in the universe and humans could devise ways to harness that power as an energy source, a new theoretical study claims. The gravitational pull from black holes is so strong that nothing can escape its grasp. So could we ever harness the gargantuan power of black holes as a source of energy? And a new study scientists propose two ways to use black holes as energy sources someday. <laughs> they predicted process for extracting energy from black holes by using their rotational and gravitational properties. We know that we can extract energies from black holes, and we also know that we can inject energy into them, which almost sounds like a battery, lead author Zane Feng Mai, a postdoctoral researcher at the Kavi Institute of Astronomy and Astrophysics at Perking 
universities hold life science. In the first hypothetical scenario, scientists would charge the black hole by injecting its massive electrically charged particles. These charges would continue being sucked in until the black hole itself had an electric field that began repelling in additional charges they attempted to inject, the scientists explain in the study. When the electromagnetic repulsion was greater than the gravitational pull of the black hole, scientists would consider it fully charged, in keeping with Einstein's theory of general relativity, which says that mass can be treated as equivalent to energy. The black hole's available energy would come from a combination of electrical charges injected into it, as well as the mass of those electrical charges. The black hole battery is transforming the energy of the particles mass into energy, charged energy, May said. The researchers calculated the efficiency of the recharging process to be 25%, meaning the black hole batteries could transform about a quarter of the mass inputted into energy, and uh, available energy in the form of electric field. This would make the efficiency of the battery about 20, 250 times higher than that of an atomic bomb, the team calculated. You see right there? Fun times. We're, we're headed to fun times. To extract the energy, the researchers would utilize a process known as super radiance, which is based on the theory that space-time is literally dragged around the rotation of a spinning black hole because of its intense gravitational field. Gravitational or electromagnetic waves that entered the region of rotation would get dragged along too, but assuming that they had not yet passed the black hole's event horizon, the boundary beyond which nothing, not even light, can escape, some waves might be deflected with more energy <laughs> that initially carried the researchers wrote. This process would convert the black hole's rotational energy determined by its mass into waves that are deflected. The other method of harnessing a black hole's energy would involve extracting that energy in the form of a so-called Schwinger pairs or paired particles that form spontaneously in the presence of an electric field. If we started with a fully charged black hole, the electric field near the event horizon might be so strong that it would spontaneously create an electron and positron, which is like an electron, but with an opposite charge, they explained. If the black hole was positively charged, the positron would be shot out from the black hole due to repulsion. That runaway particle could then theoretically be collected as energy. Ma said he does not know if we will ever see a battery like this, but the theoretical exercise was inspired by scientists' previous attempts to theor theoretically extract energy from the black holes. We see the black hole as a place where quantum mechanics and gravity have to somehow get together. Danielle Fascio, a physicist at the University of Glasgow, who was not involved in the study, told Live Science, by looking at them from the perspective of energy mining, we can understand a little more than what's going on. Big key note word there, mining. What happens if they're already trying to do this? What happens if those particles come out and whiz by and somehow create some kind of electrical phenomenon that, whoop, there, bye bye Earth, or bye bye source code? Once again, it, it's fun to theorize things, but I, I feel that they're already trying to do this in reality. And again, whatever is outside of the firmament is to be discussed and argued, but they're creating these things within our realm of the code. And for looking at this as a what's in the face, a computer. 
Okay, so getting on to computers, this next article from charmingscience.com. Oh, this article is very charming and very scary to think about. Scientists build a cyborg computer with living brain tissue. Hello, Carrie Cassidy. By Mohammed Quizar Rather, December 12, 2023. D this blows my mind. Hello, Terminator! In the realm of computing technology, there is nothing quite as possible and powerful and complex as a human brain. With its 86 billion neurons and up to a quadrillion synapses, the brain has unparalleled capabilities of processing information. Unlike traditional computer devices with physically separated units, the brain's efficiency lies in its ability to serve as both a pro processor and memory device. Recognizing the potential of harnessing the brain's power, researchers have been striving to create more brain-like computing systems. Efforts to mimic the brain's activity in artificial systems have been ongoing, but process has been limited. Even one of the most powerful supercomputers in the world, Riken's K computer, struggled to simulate just a fraction of the brain's activity. With its 82,944 processors and petabyte of main memory, it took 40 minutes to simulate just one second of the activity of 1.73 billion neurons connected by 10.4 trillion synapses. This represented only one to 2% of the brain's capacity. In, ye in recent years, scientists and engineers have delved into the realm of neuromorphic computing, which aims to replicate the brain structure and functionality <sighs> by designing hardware and algorithms that mimic the brain, mimic key word there. Researchers hope to overcome the limitations of traditional computing and improve energy efficiency. However, despite significant progress, neuromorphic computing still poses challenges, such as high energy consumption and time-consuming training of artificial neural networks. Taking a bold step towards creating a more brain-like computing architecture, a team of researchers led by engineer Feng Guo from Indiana University Bloomington, has developed an innovative approach called BrainAware. The, this groundbreaking system integrates real human brain tissue with electronics, bridging the gap between biology and technology. Brain organoids are three-dimensional mini brains made from human pluripotent stem cells. Gao and his team have made a hybrid biocomputer that can do complicated things like recognizing speech and predicting nonlinear equations. Brain organoids offer a unique opportunity to study the development of functionality of the brain without invasive procedures. This mini brains are created by coaxing human pluripotent stem cells to differentiate into various types of brain cells that self-organize into three-dimensional structures resembling the human brain. While they lack consciousness <laughs> and thought, brain organoids provide valuable insights into neural development and brain function. BioWare consists of brain organoids connected to any array of high-density microelectrodes. This connection allows for electrical simulation to transport information into the organoid, which acts as a reservoir for processing that information. The output of the organoid is then conveyed through neural activity. To complete the system, traditional computer hardware is used for the input and output layers. These layers are trained to interact with the organoid with the output layer reading the neural data and making classifications or predictions based on the input. To demonstrate the capabilities of brain aware, the researchers conducted experiments in speech re recognition. They provided the system with 240 audio clips of eight male speakers producing Japanese vowel sounds and test it with identifying a specific individual's voice. 
After just two days of training, Brain Aware achieved an impressive accuracy rate of 78%, while slightly less accurate than a pure hardware computer running an artificial intelligence. This is a significant milestone in development of a new kind of computing system. In addition to speech recognition, Brain Aware showcased its ability to predict complex mathematical systems. This researchers presented the system with a Henon map, a nonlinear dynamic system known for its chaotic behavior. After four days of unsupervised learning, Brain Aware successfully predicted the map with greater accuracy than an artificial neural network without a long-term a well, long short-term memory unit, although it fell slightly short of the accuracy that neural networks with extensive training were able to achieve. Brain Aware achieved these results in a fraction of a training time. Brain Aware offers several advantages over traditional computing systems. Its integration of human brain tissue allows for a high plasticity and adaptability enabling the system to change and reorganize in response to electrical simulation. This flexibility highlights Brain Aware's potential for adaptive reservoir computing and its ability to process information more efficiently than conventional hardware. However, there are still challenges to overcome. Keeping the brain organoids alive and healthy remains a significant limitation. Additionally, the power consumption of the the peripheral equipment needs to be addressed. Ethical considerations are also essential as sophistication of organized systems increase. Researchers must address the neural ethical issues surrounding biocomputing systems that incorporate human neural tissue. But they don't care what's in your which are from little non-existent things that are in a womb. While general biocomputing systems may be decades away, the development of brain aware has generated foundational insights into learning mechanisms, neural development, and the cognitive implications of neural degenerative diseases. Furthermore, Brain Aware has the potential to contribute to development of pre-clinical models of cognitive implant for testing new therapeutics. With its integration of human brain tissue and electronics, Brain Aware represents a significant step towards creating more brain-like computing systems. By harnessing the power and complexity of the human brain, researchers are paving the way for a new era of computing that holds promise for both technological advance and a deeper understanding of the mysteries of the human mind. Terminator, cyborgs, super soldiers. Well, you see, again, you can use this for the positive polarity and for people who have massive brain injuries and people who had significant damage growing up, something might have not went right. All the parts of the brain are not there made or in working order. These things would be perfect to be included to help a person being able to converse, to walk, to have a normal life. This is where this, this technology would be like groundbreaking for people who have traumatic brain injuries. But for an everyday computing processing using and, and making organoids, it's a little bit scary. And as much as it wants to say it's, it's not conscious, who knows if one day it might become conscious. And then we have a bunch of cyborgs and we have Terminator playing out at a theaters near you, which is reality. Maybe. Again, a lot, a lot of these, we live in duality. 
we want the best for people. And if we can create new technology to help others, wonderful. But we can always see the other side of that pole to see where it could go wrong. And where it could go wrong would be really bad for humanity where the benefits would be only benefiting, you know, people who really need it, which I would want anyway. We got to get out of the dual system and go into neutrality, but not enough people are going to be able to handle that. So we might be stuck. And our last article of the night, this is from www.physicsastronomy.com. Breaking, new research reveals 68% of the universe may not actually exist. By editor, December 14, 2023. According to the Lambda whole dark matter model, which is the current accepted standard for how the universe began and evolved, <laughs> the order ordinary matter we encounter every day only makes up around 5% of the universe's density. And again, which density are we in? With dark matter comprising 27% and the remaining 68% made up of dark energy, uh, so far theoretical force driving the expansion of the universe. I don't know if I buy this, but a new study has questioned whether dark energy exists at all, citing computer simulations that found that by accounting for the changing structure of the cosmos, the gap in the theory which dark energy was proposed to fill vanishes. Published in 1915, Einstein's general theory of relativity forms the basis for the accepted or origin story of the universe which says the Big Bang kicked off the expansion of the universe about 13.8 billion years ago. The problem is the equations at work are incredibly complicated, so physicists tend to simplify parts of them so they are a bit more practical to work with. When models are then built up from the simplified version, small holes can snowball into huge discrepancies. In Einstein's equations of general relativity that describe the expansion of the universe are so complex mathematically that for hundreds of years, no solutions accounting for their effect of cosmic structures have been found. We know from very precise supernova observations that the universe is accelerating, but at the same time, we rely on coarse approximations to Einstein's equations which may introduce serious side effects, such as the need for dark energy in the models designed to fit the observational data, says Dr. Lazaro Bodo, Bodos, co-author of the new paper. Dark energy has never been directly observed and can only be studied through its effects on other objects. Its properties and existence are still purely theoretical, making it a placeholder plug for holes in current models. The mysterious force was first put forward as a driver of the universe's accelerated expansion in the 1990s, based on the observation of type A supernova. T type Ia? I don't know. Sometimes called standard candles, these bright spots are known to shine at a constant peak brightness and by measuring the brightness of that light, by the time it reaches Earth, astronomers are able to figure out just how far away the object is. This research was instrumental in, in spreading acceptance of the idea that dark energy is accelerating the expansion of the universe. And it has earned the scientists involved in Nobel Peace Prize in physics in 2011. But other studies have the question, the validity of their conclusion, and some researchers are trying to develop a more accurate picture of the cosmos with software that can handle all the wrinkles of general relativity. That is if people can stop to think that there is flaws and holes in relativity that Einstein wrote because it's 
I'm I'm not a big fan of that. It worked in the time that it needed to be worked in, but <laughs> the theory of general relativity is fundamental in understanding the way the universe evolves. If they have the perception and interpretation correctly, in my opinion, we do not question its validity. We question the validity of the approximate solutions our findings rely on a mathematical conjecture, which permits the differential expansion of space consistent with the general relativity. And they show how the formation of complex structures of matter affects the expansion. These issues were previously swept under the rug. I wonder why, but taking them into account can explain the acceleration without the need for dark energy, says Dobos. If we look at who holds the most dark energy or who is looking into it, CERN is. And do we really know if Einstein's theories are absolute correct? If other physicists are finding a lot of flaws in that hypothesis that was created of the Big Bang, if it really occurred the way they say it's occurring again, this is all metaphysics. It's what you perceive and what you manifest into this reality that is true or not for your own perception. It's all interpretation. And we've been fed a whole strung of lies and been indoctrinated into a system that's continuously a refer foreboding in our in our real reality here. It's only people who are free thinking and critically thinking and looking at these theories, not because someone had the wrong intention or a bad intention. It's because we're being lied to. So are they feeding that lie or are they really trying to help us expand our understanding of what we are living in? Maybe the computer simulations really need to work on its bigger computer simulation that we're all inhabiting. Instead of being, uh, you know, how the analogy goes that we're in a snow globe and in an alien's room as an experiment, what happens if we are all in a computer simulated matrix, a hologram that was created in a higher motherboard being God? How is a computer simulation going to simulate that? Can it? Challenge out there, put out there, do it, because I bet you they'll find something. Just find that a lot of these articles are, are precursors for bigger things and bigger things that we need to start looking into a little bit more in depth because the nature of our existence, we're all not gonna know the truth until we Go bye bye, but in the meantime, it's it's great to ponder. It's great to think. It's great to have your perceptions, your interpretations, your understandings of things. But these experiments are really scary. Taking brain tissue, okay, even if it's not from a brain, but you still have to get it from a source. Okay, where what source are they getting it from? Where are they taking these samples from to make organoids? That's a little scary, and that's something that. Again, the movies are telling you it's not good. Could we use it for good? Absolutely. There's Everything is dual. You can use it for good and bad. But who is funding these projects? Who is sourcing these projects? Where are these experiments happening? Of course, at universities who have big money. I'm not trying to take away people who spent their entire existence in this world, nor would I want to do any harm. But if we take a larger scope of thinking and ask if some of these experiments extremely dangerous to humanity and should we all know about it, 
they're going to do it regardless of our consent or not. But we need to know what's going on at a greater whole. Some of these experiments could zip us back into a fail safe. And then we, we right before we ascend, it, the something takes us out again. Do we really want to have to repeat this again and again and again and again? Is that what has been happening? We feel like we're looping. We feel like we've been doing this over and over again. Maybe we already have. Maybe we keep, the moment we're supposed to get the expansion of consciousness, something zips us out of the realm of that timeline so that we can't get there. And then we have to start merging time back to that original place to get that energy back. There's a lot more than meets the eye and us looking for black holes that might not even exist or that it's something way different from what we are being shown, physically shown, because it's all of the computer. I mean, look at NASA. People are trying to, you know, look who made NASA. I'm not discrediting people that are looking far out, but if you're really looking at a hologram you're only going to get a projection of what's up there and is that really a true projection and that's saying when you look through one of those telescopes you're not seeing things i'm sure you are just skeptical about a lot of it reality is what you make out of it. It's your perception of it. It's your interpretation of what's happening in it. We can only collectively come together to provide a bigger step in humanity's expansion of consciousness if we all start really investigating and coming together in unity to start manifesting for better. If you go back to my dark city video the ending the main character is tuning a whole beach because everybody was promised this beach but they lived inside a cube they were manipulated by other entities they were like the animals in a zoo being experimented on living lives that were not really theirs having each night or each cycle, new memories implanted in them, new identities being given to them. Is that what we're living in? It's a very good movie. It came out before The Matrix. Um, go check that out on my channel. I have it. I'm going to see if I can find it to post the link. Um, it's, it's, it's eye-opening. And if we can all start tuning in the reality that we would like to have for humanity, maybe we don't need all these fanciful things that would cost things, like money. Not everything is about money, and that's what is the test. Yeah, we need it to live right now, in the now, but maybe in the future we manifest better for ourselves. We don't need to focus on it. We can just focus on living and having experiences and doing better. And I see this every day with the people I am surrounded with. Everything is about money. And it should be about experience and gaining knowledge and walking through things to gain that knowledge and wisdom. But until then, I hope all of you enjoyed some of these articles and I hope that it made you question and ponder, what the F are they doing? What are they doing? Is the next, the grand experiment something that could be a solar flash coming from a lab at MIT? Who knows? 
we have enough predictive programming and enough people jumping timelines and, and ruining our time continuum. I just saw that. Hi, Spirit. Um, it makes me ponder a lot. It makes my head hurt. <laughs> it's going to be what it's going to be. But we we all need to come together in unity. We all need to reach that neutrality. Again, go look for Decode Your Reality. That's a really good channel. If you're trying to even grasp some of what I'm trying to say and convey, Logan does it through a whole series of different types of numerology and different tactics that are genius. And I love his channel for that. And I really promote him and his work because it's just another way of saying the same things I am, but I'm doing it in a spiritual sense. He's doing it with like hard fact evidence that here, here's the card and this is what it means. And here's the element on the periodic table that it concurs to mathematically. Um, I'm just telling you from sources angle. <laughs> so sending each and every one of you light, love, protection, shielding, compassion, and grace energy please be safe be seen i hope all of you have an amazing weekend i know the holidays are coming soon try to breathe through the stress the roads are packed with crazy people stressed out people give people compassion and grace you don't know what's going on at home and a lot of it is probably nothing of the good sort especially around the holiday times and people are stressed out and, you know, let's just be humble about it. Let's reclaim the magic. And I hope to see you guys on the next one. Bye everybody.